Hi, I've been asked to do a quick uh, presentation on how I support my trees to the trellis wires. Uh, not only just training, but supporting with a crop load on. Um, this is really important because with these small trees, these dwarf trees, they can be a little bit precocious and they may develop a crop load that they're not capable of carrying. So one of the things you're going to do is sometimes you're going to be tying limbs up, but if you've got a limb that is really going up, you might in the beginning of the year want to train it down. You want to get fruit buds and the like forming on that limb. So just say that you can train up or you can train down. Another reason I, I mentioned crop load, They're, they've got so much weight on them. I have had limbs rip off of the tree under their weight, no wind required, uh, which was a real shame, okay? Another reason is you wanna keep your aisle clear. In my case, you know, I did the aisle the way they tell you to. However, they don't mention how wide is your tractor. And those limbs start to come out into the aisle because they were thinking I was doing tall spindle. My trees don't spindle tall. So they still fan out a bit. And I need to keep those limbs restrained to keep that aisle clear. And I talked about limb training. So this is why we will tie our limbs to train them. And sometimes you might lead them on for a while, although I've noticed that some of my older trees, the limbs are getting thick enough and lignified enough that they can support a crop load. They don't need support anymore. In fact, those limbs can support another limb. So that's why we do it. Now, this really simple rule of doing this is when you're supporting a limb, listen. If you hear wood cracking, down near the junction or the like, you're putting too much strain on it. Just stop. Move your support elsewhere or just stop because you will start to crack and you could tear that juncture to the leader, to the trunk. So listen. The other thing is you never want to want to put your string or a wire or anything directly around the soft tissue on the leader or on the the limb, the scaffold. You don't want to do that. It will girdle it. It will damage it. You need to have what I call a yoke, just like on a pulling horse, they have a soft shoulder pad thing to help them pull. You need a yoke, a soft material to prevent that chafing and the damage to the tree while it's supporting the weight. Okay. So that's, you know, those are, that's the simple rules. Don't break it. Don't cut it. Yeah, simple rules. Okay, the simple tools. I thought about this and I'm boiling it down to the absolute simplest stuff. String. String is a really good tool. It's not always the right tool, but it's a really good tool. Okay, this is what they call Mason's line. It's used for like a straight edge for either with a, a plumb bob to make sure you, something's vertical or if your, brakes are, your bricks are straight. And it's durable, it's a three strand, and I found that it lasts for several seasons. I tried using jute, it didn't even last one season and it rotted, which sounds really kind of nice in a biodegradable sort of way, but it was a waste of time. Mason's line, uh, Home Depot, Home Hardware, uh, maybe even the County Farm Center. Okay, simple stuff. Thing to know about it, as I said, it's three strand. It's not a woven, it's, and those will unwind. So every time you cut it, you need to put what I call a stopper knot in the end to keep it from unraveling. Okay, it's just the thing. Uh, the way I do it, it's not just a single bite. Take a loop, one and two, then pull through, one and two, then pull through, and what you get is a fatter knot that isn't going to slip, okay? And that comes in handy later, the fact that that knot doesn't slip and it's big and it will keep it from unraveling. So, simple, string. Throw that on the floor. 
a string goes with scissors. Don't try cutting that nylon with a pocket knife. It's, it's just a mess and it will fray. If you're carrying a, a razor knife with you and stuff, that's a little bit more dangerous than it needs to be. The only thing I've found with these is I've had to kind of get a technique because after I've cut, it gets stuck on my thumb. So after I cut it, I use the other hand to pull it off my fingers. It's not a big deal. Any scissors will do the job uh, even probably a children's, you know, the little blunt things you couldn't hurt anything with, barely cut paper, test them, they do the job. Um, the only thing I recommend is stainless steel so you can clean them and they last. So you need scissors for cutting the string. You also need scissors for cutting the next thing. Ag lock. Now, ag lock is made for tying a lot of things, but primarily with agriculture, okay? And one thing I like about aglock, because I just found out today, I always thought it'd be hard to cut with little scissors. Not so. Aglock's the brand. There are other suitable items, so you might go, if you can't find it, go to Amazon, look up aglock, which you couldn't buy locally, and sometimes they have people also bought, and you might see a similar product. Now, one thing with Aglock brand stuff, it comes in different widths. Um, what I've got here is 150 foot, and it's not telling me what the width of it is. Anyway, I got 150 foot. One side's smooth, one side's kind of rough. Put the smooth side against the tree's flesh, okay? Just be nice. Take a moment, feel the smooth side, put it around the tree. I always give myself a lot of slack when I'm putting this on because okay. I never know if I'm going to put it someplace else later. If you make everything just to fit, you're either going to have to completely replace it later as the tree grows or it grew out of that area, but now you have other pieces. It's very durable in the sun. The box is a dispenser, okay? Uh, that's also kind of important. The box is a dispenser and you pull one, pull the other, they come off. There's a piece of paper between the rolls. If you open the box, don't take the piece of paper out between the rolls. That keeps them from snagging against each other. You'll be miserable. Don't take the piece of paper out from between the rolls. Aglock, uh, a really, I'm very glad I found this product. It's, it's a very good, appropriate, tough, durable, easy to use product. Another product are called clip-on trellis ties. There's two ways you can use these. You can either fasten these to the wire themselves and put the limb through it and then clip clip onto the wire, or you can use these as your yoke, okay? These work really well with that string because that string happens to fit really nicely inside of that little clip slot, okay? So it, it has a benefit there. Now, word of caution, I learned recently from friends that all wire is not created equal for, tens for trellis wire. They had a lot of trellis wire that had come from a vineyard, not an orchard. I use 12 and a half gauge high tensile steel wire, 12 and a half gauge. Theirs was substantially thicker, perfectly good wire. And they make products like this for that gauge wire. So you need to talk to your supplier and say, I need clips like this guy showed me on YouTube and ask them for them. And these, these are the, the smallest ones I've seen. These might be four inches three inches. Okay. I've seen some. They make some really big ones. So get the size that you need. Now, one of the things with these and with the egg lock is that you can fasten to the wire or you can also loop this around the trunk. And if you've got the notch of another scaffold on the other side, you can hang it on that. Okay. So you're not always fastening to the wire. Sometimes you can fasten to the leader. But if your wires can't support the load and you don't have tree posts 
to support the load. You might have to ask the tree to help support the load. When you do that, balance the load. If you're supporting a limb on one side, try to find a limb on the other side so you're not pulling your leader from one side to the other. Try to balance the load so that you're pulling the tree up. You're shaping it just a little bit. Doesn't have to be a lot, but if you put everything on one side and you're not paying attention to the other side, you're gonna put a lot of force on the tree. Don't do that, okay? Now, that this kind of brings up a point. If you don't have a tree stake, I use conduit. Uh, some people get bamboo in long lengths. If you don't have something to shape and train that leader to stay straight, eventually you will have problems with dwarf trees. You will have problems. You need to find something. If as the tree gets taller, you start to get a, a apical section that's loaded with fruit, it's more important that you support that than you have a piece of bamboo down on the bottom, okay? Slip that up, secure it, and keep that stable. Show you a picture in a moment. We had a windstorm hit last night. I had beautiful, heavy load of fruit on the top. It was secured at a wire and there was a gap to the next wire. It didn't make it through the night. Just snap that puppy off right at the wire and maybe a dozen fruit were up in that top section that wasn't secured. Don't let that flop around. If you're gonna let if you if you're gonna to get to a point, then you might ask yourself, do I need to put a heading cut during pruning season? Do a heading cut on that to keep them down. I'm trying to keep my trees under 10 foot because it's also a pain for me to harvest and train. So my conduit's 10 feet tall, that's my limiting factor. So anyway, they make these for different gauges. I got notes here, I gotta stay with my notes. I told you about the knot at the end of the string. You can support from the wire or from the leader. I have another video about this tool, tapener. That's what it's called, it's called a tapener. Uh, I blew it. Anyway, you can use this to train limbs to the wire. So you can, if you have a limb, it opens up, you get some fabric in there, some ribbon. The nice thing is as things grow and it gets strain on it, eventually, I don't wanna set this on the keyboard, eventually that will tear. There are different thicknesses of this, okay? So you can buy this in different colors and the colors represent the strength of it. Don't get too carried away. You don't want it to girdle because it could on a young, on young material. These are really nice <clears throat> for walking through the orchard and going whack, 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 just to get loose hairs, you know, giving a little trim, a tapener tool. Throughout this, I'm, I'm hopefully have been interjecting some videos or some um, images. One image I want to show you now is how you tie the string to the wire. One th the way I do that knot is I go over the wire, across the string, and then I take that lead, that terminal end that's got the knot in it. Yeah, I take that and I follow it so it follows the same path as the one that it came in. Okay, it's not a real knot. If it went the, over the opposite side of the cross, that would be a clove hitch, but clove hitch will slip. This doesn't slip. And what's nice about it though, is when it comes time that you want to adjust it, it's very easy to loosen and adjust. And then when you put tension on it, it stays put. So there should be a photograph in here of that. Also show a photograph of what happens to, you can see how my trees, they need help. They look like puppets because they have so many strings tied off on them, which is why I'm putting out more tree posts to get more support going up and then having that beast, that, that post supporting the wires and then I'll, I'll be able to support them more. 
at the end of the season, every one of those that's needed support is going to be something I'm going to look at for pruning because they get in the way, they're a lot of strain, and you'll notice a lot of them are really low to the ground, and that's problematic. Another reason to train is your central leader may flop over, and the next thing, and Metal Dwar does this, next thing you know, you've got this bush. You don't want a bush, you want a tree, okay? So you need to make sure you keep one vertical so that it gets apical dominance and it keeps growing. And as it keeps growing, it will start to get laterals coming off, scaffolds coming off of it, okay? So one reason to train, don't let your tree flop before it's the height you want it to be. You really need it to, you need to designate a central leader and help it maintain its apical dominance. This is one of my surviving <coughs> metal door, excuse me, and it lost apical dominance. It just became a bush, and I'd like it to get bigger before it becomes a bush. I put two support ties on heavily laden limbs, I put a few more on, but what I did is I picked one coming out of the middle, and while it, it hasn't lignified yet, it's not hard, it didn't start snapping and cracking, I'm pulling it vertical. I'm gonna let it bear fruit, but I'll likely nip it next year and prune it so that it creates an apical bud and it starts going vertical some more and these laterals develop better. So it's just something I just keep an eye on while I'm working. If it's not too late, now's a good time to at least select an apical bud limb structure. Got a bunch of editing to do now. I hope this answers questions. The clip-ons are nice. This is awesome. The string and the scissors are awesome. Um, I'll probably cut a little video in there, but when you put these together and you form a loop, let me make a bigger section. The way I do it is the first thing I do is I put a loop in the string and I fold it around itself and I put it right around this little, that first little detent there and I hold it. Then I take this whole thing with the string hanging off of it and I put that around the limb and I lock it to whatever tightness I want and I've got that string and now I'm going to take that string up either to the wire or location on the leader and say, okay, that's where I want the support to come from. And keep an eye on the limb you're supporting. Make sure you're putting this in a spot where it's not gonna to wanna to slip when the wind's buffeting it. So put it between some fruit buds, put it by a burst. Yeah, a burst nodule, whatever, but make sure you get that support in the right place. Okay, if you go out too far and try to pull, that's where you start to tear down by the leader. If you come in too close, you're gonna allow tension, it's just gonna keep folding over again. I hope that's been of some help from you. Thumbs up if you liked it. Give me some feedback, please, if you'd like me to show you more detail. I don't want this to get too long. It already feels like it's too long. Take care. Bye for now. Okay, two things going on with this tree. One, all of my wires aren't very strong. I'm working on that. So this wire up here by my hand, I've got a clip on it to keep it from sliding side to side. But it really doesn't do much good for supporting weight like that. So what I'm using is Aglock to make an anchor point on the trunk. And you can see that I've twisted it through and then I've left a stub, and the stub gives me a point to hang out on, okay, so I can tie off onto the stub. Now I've got my tension lines coming down to anchor points where I'm using trellis clips on the limb. And out in this case, I'm going right below a burst chute, but I've got a nice soft spot there close to the weight. On this one, 
it's a little bit more let's see where's my hand there's this a little bit more mid limb and I can slide it but again it's supporting the weight of the limb with a lot of the fruit and for me a big deal is that as I back up I hope you can see it's very bright today it's pulling those limbs in out of the aisle so I have a little bit more travel room to work with in here for moving my tractor around. So I hope that helps out a little bit there.